In the late 1940s, the U.S. Army requested a lightweight monoplane that could fly at low altitudes for short field operations. But during the Korean and Vietnam Wars, the Cessna 01 Bird Dog would take a more significant role in signaling rockets and relaying combat information to strike aircraft. The tiny but resourceful Bird Dog would eventually be manufactured in several countries and flown all over the world on its way to a lengthy career. Still, a particular occurrence at the tail end of the Vietnam War would become its trademark deed. During the massive humanitarian operation that evacuated the remaining Americans and thousands of South Vietnamese civilians on April 29, 1975, Major Buong Lee stole a bird dog to flee from Con Son Island and take his family to safety. With no working localization instruments and the aircraft's fuel running out, the South Vietnamese pilot eventually followed a helicopter squadron and spotted a U.S. aircraft carrier in the open sea. The USS Midway was already rescuing hundreds of evacuees when a note fell from the skies, quote, Please rescue me, Major Buong, wife and five child. Unprepared to land a restless aircraft amidst the frenzied chaos, Captain Lawrence Chambers risked his own career to help a fleeing family in distress. A hunting aircraft. The United States Army Air Forces rearranged its military structure in 1947, becoming two autonomous entities, the U.S. Army and the U.S. Air Force. The U.S. Army lacked proper air support for utility roles, such as light scouting and liaison duties. Hence, their first order of business was to issue a request for proposal for an all-metal fixed-wing aircraft that would serve this purpose. The new aircraft had to be a two-man, single-engine observation monoplane for short or rough field operations. It required excellent out-of-the-cockpit vision and to perform effectively at low altitudes. Using their Cessna 170 model as a starting point, Cessna Aircraft Company submitted Model 305A for consideration. The aircraft had an engine compartment and a two-blade propeller assembly at the front, as well as a single fin tail. The undercarriage consisted of a pair of single-wheeled legs and a small tail wheel. It was also non-retractable to keep it simple and with low-cost maintenance. The cockpit housed an inline tandem seating configuration. All sides were windowed at a perfect angle for maximum visibility. This included the rear fuselage, later known as an omni-view. A transparent ceiling was also placed on top of the cabin, right in the middle of the wings, for an overhead view. The high wing was straight, which enabled good lifting and robust handling at low speeds and its flexible structure was strut-based for added support. During the Vietnam War, air-to-surface rocket tubes were placed under the wings to give it a limited offensive punch. A wide door was also fitted to allow for stretchers during rescue missions. Later versions included constant speed propellers, and its final iteration, the L-19E, was larger in gross weight. Although the rugged and highly maneuverable aircraft could effortlessly land and take off in short runways, its fuel range was limited to 500 miles, other drawbacks included the lack of armor protection, little rocket-carrying capacity, and no self-sealing fuel tanks. The aircraft was named Bird Dog through an internal employee contest. Jack A. Swayze proposed the name in reference to a hunting dog that identifies potential prey. Similarly, the aircraft would spot enemy targets and patrol them until artillery was brought in to take them down. On December 14, 1949, the former Cessna Model 305A flew for the first time, and the U.S. Army extended Cessna a contract for 418 aircraft. Introduced into service as the L-19A Bird Dog, delivery started by December 1950. The Department of Defense eventually ordered 3,200 Bird Dogs between 1950 and 1959. The purpose was to stock both the U.S. Army and the U.S. Marine Corps, which initially designated it as the OE-1. The Bird Dog first served in the Korean War, where it was primarily used for general liaison, reconnaissance, medevac, target acquisition, artillery spotting, and airborne communications. And finally, in 1962, both the Army's L-19 and the Marine Corps' OE-1 bird dogs entered the Vietnam War. Evacuating a Nation During the Vietnam War, the bird dogs patrolled over the Vietnamese jungles, marking targets with signal rockets and directing airstrikes. The U.S. Air Force also used them as forward air control aircraft for close air support, assistance to ground troops, and relay information to strike aircraft. Even though the Paris Peace Agreement had supposedly ended the war in 1973, the North Vietnamese Army kept the war going and took advantage of the near absence of Americans. By early 1975, the NVA had seized key bases and captured several coastal areas. A frenzied evacuation ensued, with the remaining Americans and many South Vietnamese civilians boarding military aircraft and transport planes en route to the Philippines, Guam, and Wake Island. On April 29, 1975, 
considered the last day of South Vietnam's existence. Communist forces led by General Van Tien Dung were closing in on Khan San Island, one of the last bases still controlled by the Army of the Republic of Vietnam. South Vietnamese Air Force Major Buang Li then stole a tiny aircraft, helped his wife and five children into the back seat in storage area, and took off with no specific direction or plan in mind. Buang just needed to flee and find shelter before the fuel ran out. The aircraft met heavy ground fire resistance while heading into the open sea. The O-1 bird dog wasn't designed to fly over the ocean, with its fixed landing gear making it impossible to drift. It also wasn't equipped with navigation instruments or life vests, and Buang wasn't carrying a proper headset, rendering the radio useless. After flying for 30 minutes, the South Vietnamese pilot spotted what looked like helicopters heading east. His instinct pushed him to follow them, unaware that the helicopters were carrying evacuees too. Quote, I was searching for a safe place. It made me think there was something out there they could depend on, Buang would later recall. Finally, a large ship appeared in the distance. Buang had never seen an aircraft carrier, but he knew the American warship was his last chance at survival. Operation Frequent Wind That morning, on April 29th, a massive humanitarian effort had already been launched. It was called Operation Frequent Wind, and its objective was to transfer and watch over thousands of evacuees. The arrival of Vice President Wing Kao Ki and Lieutenant General Gung Quang Trong to the USS Midway aircraft carrier marked the beginning of the operation. By 11 a.m., Secretary of State Henry Kissinger ordered American diplomats to evacuate the country through a secret signal, quote, The temperature in Saigon is 105 degrees and rising, as the song White Christmas started playing. Evacuees in Saigon would then move to extraction sites, board buses, and head to the airport. The New York Times declared, quote, at least 74 planes of the South Vietnamese Air Force streamed into the Yu Tafau Air Base in southern Thailand without warning. The USS Midway and the 7th Fleet had been ordered to aid in the evacuation of American diplomats, CIA agents, contractors, and Marines still stationed in Saigon. Allied South Vietnamese citizens were to be helped, too. The old carrier was being repaired when hastily called into action, and its crew was smaller than usual. Air assistance was provided by 10 Sikorsky H-53 helicopters, which could carry 55 passengers each. Standard non-combat logistics within the carrier involved only a few dozen transportees a day. Captain Lawrence Chambers, the USS Midway commander, struggled to accommodate the incoming helicopters and refugees. Weather conditions complicated Commander Vern Jumper's task of organizing flight operations, and aircraft kept going back and forth. Meanwhile, the Marines aboard the warship searched the incoming evacuees, looking for contraband and weapons, and crew members provided basic medical care and food. Captain Chambers later stated, quote, a flight deck is a hazardous operation under normal conditions. And when you see little kids and mothers holding little babies and airplanes, helicopters are taking off and landing, you just kind of hold your breath. Despite arranging the incoming aircraft as close together as possible, the USS Midway's deck quickly filled up. Then, a small rambling bird dog came into view. A high-risk landing. When Major Buang's bird dog was initially sighted, Captain Chambers knew that if it wasn't allowed to land, the aircraft would crash in the USS Midway's deck. To make matters worse, the fixed-wing bird dog could not hover and drop off its passengers safely, and its fixed landing gear would make the aircraft flip if it attempted to land in the water. As the bird dog circled, three paper notes would drop from the cockpit, but the crew couldn't reach them before they blew over the side. A fourth note was weighed using a pistol's leather holster. The message read, quote, Can you move this helicopter to the other side? I can land on your runway. I can fly one hour more. We have enough time to move. Please rescue me, Major Buang, wife, and five child. All available crewmen and volunteers were summoned to help clear the deck for landing. The ship was turned into the wind to facilitate the landing, and firefighters readied their hoses. The landing cables were also removed because the Cessna didn't have a tail hook. The crew then heaved three empty Hueys and one Chinook to the sides, and they went overboard. Making the most of the opportunity, another five helicopters landed and disembarked their passengers, and they were thrown overboard too. Chambers believed that he would be court-martialed for disposing of millions of dollars, so he looked away, trying to avoid the chaos. Translators in the bridge tried to warn Buang about the unpredictable downdrifts, but their attempts were unsuccessful. The rattling aircraft made two practice passes to get a feel for the landing. Buang then lowered the flaps and caught up to the ship at 60 knots. The aircraft slowly descended, bounced once on the landing area, and stopped halfway through the runway. Marines ran to hold the bird dog in case it rolled over to the side, but its short takeoff and landing features prevented it from moving. With the help of dozens of crew members who used their bodies to hang onto the aircraft, 
Wang and his wife climbed out of the cockpit, carrying their youngest child. The pilot then pulled the seat forward, and their four other children followed, while everyone on deck clapped and cheered. Legacy About 500 Cessna bird docks were lost during the Vietnam War, and surviving aircraft were later passed to the South Vietnamese Air Force. During their earlier life, the bird dogs were also flown by clandestine operators in Laos and Cambodia, and in the Australian Army. Years later, they were also manufactured in Japan under the Fuji label, and in Italy by SIA, and in Italy by SIAI Marchetti. Bird dogs were gradually replaced in the 1970s, and the last model was built in 1974. However, they became popular among private owners going into the 21st century, and have served in several air patrols, rescue missions, agriculture, and recreation. A total of 3,431 known units served in several countries worldwide. As for the Buong family, they were transported to the U.S. along with 130,000 South Vietnamese refugees. The USS Midway's crew established a fund for the family, and they are now American citizens. Buong and his family still visit their infamous bird dog at the National Naval Aviation Museum in Pensacola, Florida.